Let's talk about Synology SSD caching, how I implement my setup, and why I think it is extremely worth it for creative professionals. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. There are many ways to implement SSD caching on your Synology. If you have a newer system with built-in NVMe slots, you're pretty much set and ready to go. However, if you have one of the older system that does not have a built-in NVMe slot, there are a few things you can do. For instance, you can dedicate a few drive bays and install standard 2.5 inch SSD in there and use it as an SSD cache. I don't generally think this is the best way to approach the system because those bays can be used to put in hard drive and increase the size of the storage pool. So I don't think that that's a really good use of those bays that comes in your Synology NAS system. If your system happens to have a PCIe slot that allows for expansion, this is where a lot of creativity can happen from it. For instance, Synology makes two different cards that stands out to me. One of them is the M2D20, which has two dual NVMe on there and it will allow you to do SSD caching that way. Or what you can also get is the E10 M20-T1 that has dual NVMe and also a 10 gigabit copper base connection. And this is the card that I have installed in my system right now. I have the DS1618 Plus, which is the generation before the built-in and NVMe slots inside the machine. So for this, I have one 10 gigabit connection on the back of the card itself using a copper base and I can link this up to my switch without any issues. It is NVMe enabled and you can install dual M.2 2280s NVMe. If you go to Amazon and search NVMe, 2280 size are gonna be the one that pops up and they're generally more consumer oriented. You can also add more of a server grade enterprise NVMe line and that is the M.2 22110. And on these NVMe's, what they have is a power loss prevention feature. So on the NVMe blade, Many times they will have a capacitor and also extra NAND flash. So should a power cut off or the NAS system lose power and you're writing something to it, it's going to finish writing the data to the NAND flash before the system shuts down the NVMe itself, therefore preventing any data corruption. A few things to consider is that if your NAS is linked up to a continuous power supply or have a battery backup, or you're just using these, SSD NVMe as data caching only, you may not need to get the more enterprise option. Synology website also has a compatibility NVMe list. So for instance, if I search my NAS and you can search your model as well, DS1618, you can select the different categories, hard drive SSD that are compatible. For instance, the one that I have right now is the M.2 SSD by E10 M20T1. This is the card that I have and I'll click on find devices. And this is going to give me literally just only four NVMe's and they are Synology brand only. So there is a Synology pretty much 400 gigabytes or 800 gigabyte, the short card 2280 or the longer card 22110. That's pretty much all the options that I have for this and it doesn't recommend anything else. So these are the list of approved and tested NVMe's from Synology. They even list it on their website that Synology will not provide any technical support if your device is not on the Synology product compatibility list. So that's one risk you're running if you're not using a Synology NVMe. Personally, for my setup right now, what I have is two Samsung SSD 970 EVO Plus, and they're two terabyte each, so I have them run together in a read-only cache. Because it is a read-only cache, it's pretty much just copying the data from the hard drive, putting it into this cache, and it's being used to speed up reading process as files are accessing them. It's not being written to constantly in the way that a read and write cache would do, so I'm generally okay right now. And rather than sending the SSD cache to go for the full four terabyte storage space I have, what I have done is cut that down to around three terabytes, therefore giving the SSD extra 25% over provisioning, meaning that if the SSD gets filled up, it's not really good for the SSD or the NVMe itself. So what I've done is lower the maximum capacity. Therefore, once it fills up, it still has extra NAND flash that it can write to. And those are the NAND flash that are not allocated to the program itself or to DSM. So DSM will not see it, but the controllers on these NVMe SSDs will be able to use those extra overhead allocated space. Here's some observation about Synology NVMe that you may find interesting. I believe that Synology are using Toshiba NVMe rebranded as Synology One. However, Synology is using their own firmware on top on the NVMe 
And having this allows some advantages, meaning that it can really be optimized with DSM, the station manager. And also if you need to get a firmware update, it's the process is done from DSM itself, so you don't have to take the NVMe out, run an update or anything like that. So there are some advantages of having a Synology branded one. Another thing that I've been looking at and observing is the capacity. It's really strange that Synology comes in primarily to capacity 400 and recently they just announced the 800 gigabyte module. What my observation about this is that Synology takes the regular Toshiba NVMe, put their own custom firmware on there, but they also do prov over provisioning very heavily on these SSD as well. For instance, an 8 gigabyte one could have been a 1 terabyte or a 1.2 terabyte SSD with extra over provisioning so that if it gets filled up, there is extra room on the SSD for it to write. Based on what I found out so far about these NVMe's that they're still using file level cells, that is TLC, based RAM, which is very similar to what I'm using in my Samsung SSD. Obviously, I'm the way how I'm running my system right now does have a risk. If something happens, Synology is not going to support it. If the SSD fail, well, obviously, I'm going to have a troubleshoot this on my own. So if you want NVMe caching and you're running on a PCIe card and you want a full compatibility with Synology, it's best to probably use their NVMe. However, if you're a techie person like I am and you know how to get around some problems, then using another brand NVMe should work as well, but I would look for a more robust one. For example, a Samsung EVO Plus or the Samsung Pro SSD line, preferably one that has like DRAM on there and everything. I haven't had a chance to test many of the other brands, but so far the one that I have installed on my system works. But again, this is one of those things where your mileage may vary, but I thought I might share with you this experience. If you are a pro like me, you have a NAS and 10 gigabit networking, I highly recommend getting SSD caching because it will make the biggest difference. Because with SSD, there are no moving parts. So what Synology will do is copy the files that you're reading, provided that you set this up as a read-only cache and put it onto the NVMe, therefore speeding the reading process so that your computer doesn't have to wait until the hard drive spins around that file again in order to be able to read the file. This is going to speed the throughput onto your system quite a bit, especially if you're randomly accessing files such as video editing or even photo editing. One of the biggest difference that I found is in photo editing. For instance, a lot of times I use to edit my photos on an SSD because it's 500 megabytes per second, no moving parts. And what I do is stitch together 45 megapixel files into this large panorama that can be anywhere between 300 to 500 megapixels. And the file size itself can be up to about a gigabyte. With these on the SSD, you can edit without any problems. It will flow through just fine. However, being that it is on my NAS system and I have 10 gigabit connection, you would think that the program such as Lightroom should be able to access this file without any issues at all or without any stutter, but that's not true. So trying to edit that on a NAS was really a painful process where the program would freeze, it doesn't know what to do, it has to wait for the file to be refreshed, and that is because you're editing based on a spinning drive. So every time Lightroom needs to read the file, to adjust those data, it has to wait for those hard drive, all six or however many of them you have, in order to cross that path where that file is stored on the hard drive. Having the SSD in there, what Synology does, and I have mine set up as a read-only cache, it copies that singular file into the SSD, allowing my computer instantaneous access to that. So with SSD caching, you're getting two benefits a large storage pool and also a place where your computer can access the data that's stored on that large storage pool really quickly. Editing in Lightroom now with my Synology NAS with SSD caching, it's pretty much very similar to editing on an SSD, but just with a much larger size that I can store my files in. There is a big difference, and if you're running on a system or a setup very similar to what I have, I highly recommend that you get an SSD cache. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified, and until next time, in art we trust.